Hey guys, Chance Williams here. Today I'm going to discuss with you one of the most simplest things that you can do when it comes to checking the charging system on your Ford 2002 F-150 with a 4.6 and this particular well, uh, diagram that I have laid out here for you. And this is the most simplest way I can explain it to you because I actually check with parts stores from time to time. They talk about some of the parts that they have returned because People just go and buy them and stick them on and it doesn't repair them. But anyway, let's get involved in diagnosing this particular vehicle right here. Now, my, I will tell y'all that my mouse is not functioning like it's supposed to. So you're going to have to use your smarts and kind of pay attention to what I'm trying to tell you. So hopefully y'all can see this. If you can look really close, you can see my mouse, is, for some reason or another, just doesn't want to function right. This is your power lug on the back of your alternator. This is your case. This is your regulator. And this is your whole complete housing and your whole alternator. What I like to personally do is I'd like to take a such as a load device. But what I'm going to give you the easiest form of doing is take a set of jumper cables. Hook it to the pos positive lead of this alternator right here. And that's from the battery po uh, positive to over to this lug on the back of the alternator. Now, then take your uh, the other end of your jumper cables there, hook them to the negative battery side and go to the case, case ground. Now, if this alternator starts charging, then you need a wiring diagram to figure out it is what exactly that is keeping your alternator from charging. OK, so now let's say, let me uh, pull up another diagram here. If you don't mind, give me just a second. I'm going to pull up this one particular connector issue. Uh, connector and any connector issue is a connector this connector with this i don't know if you all can see my my little bitty tiny dot there it's you almost need magnifying glass to see it i'm sorry for that pin one pin two pin three pin two is not showed in the diagram and i'll explain why is it because it goes to generator s terminal to generator s terminal and if you'll give me just a minute i'll show explain that to you but pin one voltage supplied all the time low overload protected that is protected by a fuse. Pin uh, three is generator battery indicator control. Now, if you back out of this diagram right here, let me let me back out of the diagram for you guys. Go back into sharing my screen and pull pull up an actual diagram. Now, everybody needs a diagram to go by. I don't care who you are or who you think you are, unless you're just really good at being crazy with figuring out things of this nature and where it needs to, where everything falls in line of what lines are what and what pins are what because you have multiple uh, color wires that sometimes are the same color wires going to different control devices and I'm just finding out that my mouse is not working exactly right so y'all have to walk along with me down at the very bottom down there it says generator control or generator stator regulator so if you're looking at this thing it says be positive right there that is battery power that's that big lug that i was telling you about that you should come off to the far left over there if you look at that little uh dots in there that see 1100 a and c 1100 b that's your battery <coughs> would your battery be in there battery positive is at the top it goes up the line up to the top of the screen feeds to uh fusible links then it goes through a starter relay once it goes through the starter relay then it finds its way back to the back of the alternator that's the reason you need to take the cables and hook to the battery and go from here to there. You're eliminating whether uh, you've got power here or not. Or you can, if you're smart and you got a load device, you can get yourself a big red screen, excuse me, like a Chevrolet uh, headlight bulb in the older model ones. That's what I got. And I'll actually come off the back. I'll unhook the alternator on the back of that, um, that cable on the back of that alternator. And I'll light up that light bulb. If it lights up, then I just verified that all of my wiring all the way back to the battery positive is fine, right? Well, say, for instance, you uh, hooked up your jumper cables on there. Now, all of a sudden, your alternator is working. Well, that's when you got to figure out with a wiring diagram from your battery power all the way through these fuses, through the starter relay, back to the back of the alternator where, of where that issue lies. You don't want no problems with your truck, so make sure that you do the diagnosis right. Well, say, for instance, the battery power is fine, but you had a negative hooked up over there to the case, and that's the reason it started. Take your voltmeter out, put it on volts, go from your negative side of your battery over to your case on your alternator. If you're showing voltage on that thing, then guess what? You have a ground issue. Then you need a line diagram to figure out where G105 and G100 and G101 are. Most likely, they're going to be on the side of the block, and they're probably going to be dirty, and they're probably going to need to be cleaned up. 
Okay, say for instance now that you've got your jumper cables hooked up, the alternator still is not charging. <clears throat> okay, no problem. Pin one, unhook it. If you got a load device, use your load device like your little light. If it load, lights up, then you got no problem with that. But if it doesn't light up, then you need to start going backwards with a diagram to find out, hey, I should have checked this fuse first. I should have done that instead of doing all this other stuff. So verify the fuses are good before you start any kind of testing, before you hook up your jumper cables or anything. Verify that your fuses are good. You see you got one central junction box inside the car and one battery junction box outside the car. Make sure that they are functioning. Okay, now say, for instance, there's no problem with uh, the power on this big lug on the alternator. There's no power issue whatsoever on pin one. Now you go, okay, well, I don't know what else to do. Well, let me show you what else to do here. Let me stop sharing my screen and get this connector back up here. Or excuse me, I'm going to get this alternator up here because I'm going to show you this alternator at pin two. Pin two. Share this screen with you. Hopefully, y'all can see it. Now, y'all can see my little mouse again. It came back. Y'all see right here where this mouse is pointing? I can barely see it. But that is that this connector right here goes over to pin two on your uh, three pin connector. You should have half a battery voltage on this line right here on pin two. If you do, if you do not have, uh, if you do have a battery voltage on that, and it's like it's supposed to be because it should be coming out of the alternator. If you don't have half a battery voltage coming out of it, more than likely the alternator is crap and just throw it in the garbage can, providing you already have your good power into the alternator and your good ground. So just throw it away. But for a keepsake, we're going to say we have half a battery uh, power on this thing. And that is working just like it's supposed to. So now we're going to go back over here to our wiring diagram. And we're going to share this with you real quick. I know you can't see my little mouse. I wish you could. I don't know. What, ah, look, now my mouse comes back. Now that my mouse is in here, I'm going to talk to you again about it. Power right here, back of the alternator, the big wire goes all the way up, comes in through here. It goes through your starter relay circuit and through your fuses back to your, back to your battery positive. There's nothing wrong in this circuit. You just verified it by using your jumper cables or load device and you're good. You took your bolt meter and you checked for uh, any type of voltage drop from your battery negative over here. You don't see nothing wrong. You've checked right here your battery junction uh, box fuse, F1-1120 amp. It's nothing wrong with that. You've verified on pin 2 over here that you can't see that it's not plugged in, that you have half a battery voltage. Sweet. Now that you suspect there might be an issue on this pin 3, snip this pin 3, take you a test light. Hook it to battery positive. Come all the way over here on this on this pin three that you just cut at the alternator and touch it. You are simulating this bulb inside this instrument cluster. Now, with that test light in line right here and this alternator starts charging, you just verified there's nothing wrong with this alternator right here at all. And you got a problem in this line up here. You either got a terrible connection at your fuse right here a blowed fuse, broken wire, bad instrument cluster, or they may be something going on with no voltage coming out of the ignition switch. But now you've done all of that. Now you've verified, hey, it charged. Now you got to start doing the legwork with what? A diagram. To start tracing that circuit back up the line to find out the food chain, if you want to call it that. Find out exactly what's going on in there to fix and verify that you can repair this and have a good diagnosis on it. Okay, now, for instance, say you got your uh, test light stretched all the way over here and you touched it and the alternator does not work. Providing you have verified no problem with this load on this on this 14, uh, this circuit 14, orange and light blue wire right here. No problem. Now you got no problem on the big wire that goes to the alternator and you got no problem with the case ground. And this alternator does not charge. Throw it in the garbage can. Hook your wires back up, put another alternator on it. But if this thing does go to charging, when you use and simulate this bulb with a test light, then you got a problem on this pin three. It's the best way I can explain it to you guys. I hope you all appreciate this. All you got to do is subscribe, join Chance Shop Talk, subscribe to my YouTube. I'm just out for it, for out, out, out here in it for the fun. Y'all take care and have a wonderful day.